this status set, uh, which is saved in an eViews file called US Health Indicators, has a number of interesting variables. Let's just open um, a couple of these. Let's say uh, poverty, population density. Okay, I'll open them as a group, so you can see the structure of the data here. We have about three more than 3,100 US counties, 3,141 and for each of these counties we have a proportion proportion of people living in that county which are obese so here the first one for instance 24.5% proportion of those living underneath the poverty line in this particular country that's 10.4 and this is the uh, population density so here 82 per square kilometer I think that is okay so but you see there's a lot of non-available data uh, that's the NAs here some just especially the health indicators like obesity that don't report so we delete this and we also have proportion of people with diabetes proportion of smokers uh, proportion of uninsured, so which proportion doesn't have health insurance and so forth and we actually have state and county identifiers so you could actually identify which county each of them is but that's not important here so what we're gonna do is we think about these variables uh, population density and poverty but if you think about smokers that's sort of a behavioral variable possibly also obesity you in the in in the main you decide uh, whether you're obese or not I know that doesn't always uh, for some people it's um, uh, difficult to control so these are all let's think about sort of health input variables but diabetes that's sort of a health output and we know sometimes that depends on uh, on behavioral variables so what we're gonna do is we're gonna see whether we can explain the proportion of people with diabetes in a county with like for instance a proportion of obese uh, in that county we know obesity can contribute to diabetes perhaps also how close how densely populated the county is um, perhaps it's related to poverty as well let's see whether smoking has an influence and what about health insurance so we'll open all this in an equation and so here we have that as the diabetes as the dependent always like the constant at the beginning not at the end let's just estimate this okay and here we are have our um, estimated residuals so can we see about 36 percent of the variation in the proportion of people who have diabetes can be explained by all these explanatory variables so remember we have county-wide data these are not individual data and uh, we see for instance obesity has a positive impact clearly significantly positive as it seems uh, population density doesn't seem to be important whatsoever poverty seems to be important positive again the same with smokers the more smokers the more people with obesity here and insured seems to have a negative impact but it's a bit marginal here now before we take these values too serious we know that these values here the standard errors come from our normal variance covariance matrix sigma squared times x prime x inverse and we know this is only valid if there's no heteroscedasticity so let's test for heteroscedasticity we go to view residual test and heteroscedasticity test so there's a number here let's see for instance the Proish pagan slash Godfrey test and what it what it says it tells us what it's going to do it's going to use an auxiliary regression with dependent variable resid square that's fine and these explanatory variables so these are all our explanatory variables all the x's uh, in the regression model let's say we wanted that I told you this is not exactly what Proish Pagan said okay they said think about it but you know you can think about it you can add other things here we could for instance add the exponential of obesity if we thought that was important or we could add any other variable that is uh, in this data set uh, before we run that let's also check uh, the white test here 
So uh, the white test requests the squared residuals on the cross product of the original regressors and the constant. In fact, let's start with this. Let's just do this y test. So what we see is here's our auxiliary regression. It's a whole lot and we see a lot of explanatory. Firstly, resid squared is our dependent variable. We know as it should be. And we have a whole lot of explanatory variables and you can see obesity and obesity squared. Population density, population density squared. Poverty, poverty squared and so forth. Smokers, smokers squared, uninsured, uninsured squared. And then we can also see all possible cross products so obesity times population density, obesity times poverty and so forth all possible combination of cross products we are not interested in, in these guys, we are interested in whether or the collection of all these explanatory variables can explain variation in the dependent variable resid squared so what we need is the R squared, that's about 4% here the question is, is that significantly larger than zero? We know what we need to calculate is that R squared times the number of observations, 2106. All the others are missing observations. And in fact, as it turns out, here's the test statistic, OPS times R squared, it's 83.25569. Now we have 20 explanatory variables. That's what the number in brackets here. So we need the critical value from a chi-square distribution with 20 degrees of freedom or we can look at the p-value which EVs already provides us. The p-value is actually zero. So it means we are basically rejecting the null hypothesis of homoscedasticity very very clearly. So let's go back, so this was the white test. Let's go back to the tests, heteroscedasticity test. Let's go to white test again. If I untick this box, what eViews actually does is, and if you click OK, we can see what the result is. eViews actually only includes the squared variables. It's okay, so an alternative would be an alternative interpretation of the Y test that you want to include the squared variables and the levels of BST population tends density, poverty, smokers and uninsured. Um, so here however in this version it just includes the squared values and again we need the R squared now it's only 4% we have much fewer explanatory variables uh, and our test statistic is here 42. Again now we compare to the chi-square 5 because we have 5 explanatory variables and our restrictions we are testing are is that each of these five coefficients is equal to zero. Again, the p-value is zero. Again, very clear rejection of the homoscedasticity assumption. So there seems to be very little doubt uh, that there is uh, heteroscedasticity. Let's go to the Prussian Pagan test just to sum it up. Of course, you could run this test just with the levels. Let's do it again, but we could add whatever we wanted. Okay, so let's just run this, but we basically get exactly the same sort of result. Very clear rejection of the homoscedasticity assumption. So let's go back to the estimate. So what does that mean if we if we estimate the our OLS model? Here we have the result. We know if there's heteroscedasticity, we can't really trust these standard errors. What we need is the white standard errors go back to the estimate option and go to options and here we can now see heteroscedasticity consistent coefficient covariance that's what we want okay and then there are two options y to new west new west you need if you have time series data we'll still talk about that so we have the white option just click OK and now you'll get slightly different standard errors okay sometimes they will be quite different sometimes it will be only slightly different but the point is these standard errors we can trust these t-statistics they will be asymptotically standard normal distributed so for sufficiently large sample sizes we can trust these t-statistics and therefore also these p-values because for large sample sizes they will come from normal distribution 
so now let's look again let's interpret what we have again obesity clearly positive the more obese you have in your county the more people will have diabetes poverty is very clearly uh, uh, seems to be very clearly affected very significant very large T stat the higher the proportion of people living underneath the poverty line the higher your proportion of diabetes ceteris paribus always the same with smokers the more smokers uh, the more diabetes uh, people with diabetes you'll have now this is an interesting one the uninsured it means the more the higher the percentage of uninsured the smaller will be the proportion of diabetes now my interpretation of this I, I don't have any intimate knowledge of how these data were collected the, these are clearly survey data in some sense my suspicion is that it is the detection rate of diabetes that comes down with uninsured. If you have more uninsured, and we know in the US this is a problem that there are significant numbers of uninsured, means some people who have diabetes will not go to doctors and will therefore not be diagnosed with diabetes. This is my take on the data, but I, I can't say this is authoritative. Okay, so far for this example.